Welcome guys, this is a tutorial video for the preemptive cross. I'm going to do a right cross today because of the camera angle again, but please do remember to practice with all the punches, left and right. Obviously pick your favourite, but it's worth practicing both sides because as I said, you never know what you might be given. Okay, cross is one of the most popular shots. You know, I don't, I prefer the hook as I've said before, but it's definitely worth practicing the cross because if you do come under instant attack, I know we're practicing preemption here, but if you do come under you know, instant attack, the cross is your better shot because the range can be changed from short to long quite quickly. And if you get good at short range, you should also be good at long range as well. You know, if you do end up from here, you know, or if you come under attack from multiples, as you'll see in my multiple opponents, hit anything that comes near you, you know? and obviously then you will be from a guarded position. But this is the preemptive strike, so we're gonna be going from a non-guarded position again. If you have landed on this video without looking at those, please go back to the fence um, tutorial and have a look at my introduction to preemptive striking so that you know what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, have a look at the hook one as well because there's some fundamentals in there which apply to kind of all of the strikes. The first one being, I'll say it again, conditioning your hands. Hitting somebody or anything really without gloves is a very, very different connection. So you kind of want to get yourselves used to doing that, but obviously don't mess your hands up, okay? Start with MMA gloves, then work down to wraps, and then hopefully um, nothing, but obviously, you know, be sensible. I have had lots of stupid cuts that I've opened up, so it does take a little while to condition your hands. All right, same stance again from your fence. We want that 45 thing going on off the center line. The same bent arm position. And again, we wanna be hitting with these two knuckles. This time to the chin, okay? So if you're practicing on a bag, I did mention in the hook video, draw targets on your bag if you, if you can. If you're working on focus mitts, you need to pretend that you are aiming for the chin. And the same thing applies, guys. Accuracy is more important than power. So work on your accuracy, because as I said to you, this range is quite foreign, and the cross is probably the worst shot for you creating this room. It's just a natural thing to do with the cross. It's not so, you know, so subtle with the hook, because you wouldn't do that, would you? But obviously with the cross, it's, you know, we're thinking about coming in, and. We don't want to do that, so you really need to untrain yourselves to be able to drop this body weight because across is, you've almost got to shrink and squash your body down to be able to throw it. It's quite weird. Um, I did pick up a very bad habit of stepping this foot back. So even though I was here, I would step the foot back to create the shot. All right, so watch out for that because I did do that. Again, if it works, you know, it's fine, but you will lose power doing that. So what I tend to do is, take, is get this distance right and then almost drop my weight back into the floor with it and come up from, you know, from my fence. I'll show you. So we trying to say then? So I'm almost sinking into the ground and I'm throwing my elbow back. But again, make your own thing up. I found it easier to keep this hand open. Again, it just kind of made me more relaxed. Obviously in karate, you've got that sort of clenched fist coming back, haven't you? I would play around with it, but I found it better to keep it open and come through this way. You almost kind of want to be standing, obviously, with your, with your fence. You've got this 45 thing going on, so you've got that room to do that, but you've got to have that arrogantly loose hand again. You know, if you're coming through from a, you know, exclamation fence, it's a bit better because you'll get that twist. You know, any boxer or karate or any martial art will tell you about the twist on impact, but you don't need it. Even if I do it from my submissive fence, look, I'll still get that power. <laughs> I'm not twisting, I'm just clenching on impact. As I said to you in the hook video, like, pulling a trigger, squeezing a trigger. My hand is not 
tense until I hit that chin. And I don't care, guys, whether you hit this way, you know, with those two knuckles, or hit this way if you like. As long as it does the job, you know, who cares? Okay, make your own thing up. And if you're finding it hard on, the, on this distance, keep your hand here to stop you moving back, okay? Just kind of put your hand, and the good thing with the, with the cross especially, is it helps get that elbow throw. You can use, use your fence, obviously here. The exclamation's better because obviously you can come back. See, I'm doing this diagonal thing here, which is helping me throw my trunk round to give me the twist in the hip and it's also helping me project that weight forward so even if you were just practicing this i know i said with the hook to do this lot yeah if you're practicing the cross a lot on a bag or anything have your hand here in your fence and get this motion going and get that breathing again ash, ash, ash. or from your submissive Ash. you can still do it Ash. see my hands here and I'm bringing that elbow back but my arm is relaxed I'm not you know shoving it back tense you know I'm coming back very relaxed Ash. and I'm twisting my whole body like this but my feet are still in my fence my conversation range I'm not changing position to throw the strike if a situation gets on top I just want to be able to strike. If I see his hands go back, you know, or his leg go back ready to strike, I will just want to be able to drop that body weight. Okay, you know, that's what we're looking for. It takes time. You have to just go for accuracy first. And get this motion right. This is for those of you that have kind of never thrown a punch, you know. Get this going, get this twist. Okay, and work up towards your chin because when you go to the chin depending on how you know I'm quite tall so I can actually throw that keeping my foot planted into the floor <laughs> lift it up slightly but do not step it back you will lose power trust me okay you just want to try and find that from the center again hit straight in drop the body weight but if you are shorter you know come up and just lift the heel but keep it coming from the center okay if you're coming upwards if you are a bit shorter and you're hitting someone taller all right just definitely don't step back if anything if you have got the distance slightly wrong I don't mind if you step forward with this foot but you don't want to move this one back you trust me you will lose power play around with it and get used to it as I said there's no right or wrong here as long as it does the job make your own bespoke punches I'm calling it a cross you can call it what you like you know it is very similar it coming coming through and I'm just going straight to the target nothing's wasted nothing's being given away this is stealth this is the sniper option that you're aiming for guys okay but work on accuracy first get this going this is what this is how I did it okay that's why I'm that's what I'm teaching to you because I did struggle with the cross I, I had some very bad habits with it and trying to put it on from this range is quite difficult especially if you're tall because obviously you've got to kind of change your body shape almost to get it on because obviously most of us aren't we we're coming from here Finish! you know so you've got to shorten it down like you've got little T-Rex arms and just condense it, condense it down and work on accuracy before you go for power, all right? But really keep an eye on yourselves that you're not creating room. The cross is the worst one for, for stepping back in, in a range that, you know, he would see. We don't want to do this. So what are you trying to say then? Yeah? Even though you'll obviously probably get more power from that, he's got more chance of blocking it okay so shorten your punches down chin either this way or this way as long as it's hitting hard you'll know if you're hitting hard 
okay you will know but try to throw it like you're almost stabbing at it rather than just yeah just stab at it and sink the weight sink your body weight into the floor try and be i know it'd be difficult to be relaxed in a real situation but try to think about being sunk into the floor you know that's why i want you to get used to being in your fence before you do any of this get used to to being here off the center line work on your bag work on your bob if you are using pads have your partner hold the pads at the range that is where someone would be you know don't be back out here for the preemptive strike okay we'll do that on another video where i will work on from a guarded position you know because if you do come under instant attack the cross is a great shot to keep people at bay okay so it's definitely worth training the cross okay because obviously even if you, if you can master it at short range the power will be there at long range okay so as with all of these punches make them your own i'm not saying what's right or wrong i don't want you to injure yourself but play around with them and shorten them and make it make them as stealth as you can okay from from this range yeah that's the best advice i can give it's the only thing the only time i'll ever say it hit and run okay a lot of people you know i've seen it happen they hit and then go in for more if you get that right if you can drop that body weight and he can't doesn't see that coming that's your time to escape okay i know there's some situations where you might have to go in you know a bit more obviously it depends on the situation but you know whether you're male or female if you can hit hard without him knowing it my advice is run after you've done that okay run to safety that's what i'm trying to encourage you to do obviously i don't want to hit anyone you know you know that if you've watched any of my other videos but i'm just trying to tweak your punches to fit a preemptive strike okay so we want to work close so just get this motion guys first yeah and this is a, this is the best way that i found is have your hand there like your antenna from your fence and shoot it back at the same time but keep it open that was the little because obviously i started to elbow it back but then you tense too early have it open shove it back and tense your fist on impact like i said like squeezing that trigger yeah you will tense on impact you know as i said i've only bent my wrist back a few times with a few bad connections just get used to it first and you must be going for the chin here you know some people go for noses i would recommend the chin we're aiming for unconsciousness we want that brain to shake so that we knock him out and if we don't knock him out it doesn't matter that will have an effect if you can you know learn to hit hard without him knowing it yeah okay i hope you found this one useful i hope there's enough information for you there if not again get in touch and i'll do another one for the cross okay so play around with it make your own thing up and as i said you will know if you're hitting hard but honestly same again i'm not talking about doing this once or twice and then moving on to the next thing do hundreds and thousands of repetitions that's where the gold is okay that's where you'll master this and it will come instinct and that's what we're looking for if you ever have to use it hopefully you won't okay but that's my aim here is to get you guys that that is instinct the fence the preemptive strike if you have to use it good luck guys and i'll see you again soon